You are the chief priest of this land and the direct voice of the ancestors. I called you because I need an explanation. What is the meaning of the devastating thunderstorm we experienced in this kingdom? Are the gods saying anything to me? You have to calm down, my king, and equally tell your subjects to calm down. There is nothing strange or dangerous about the fearful thunderstorm that tore across our land. But I must tell you that something big is surely coming to us. Wise one, can you be more specific? What exactly are you saying to me? In another land, not so far from ours, a great gift from the gods is arriving. That is why the thunderstorm lacerated our skies to prepare our hair for what is coming. It could be something. It could be someone. But we are about to experience a change. Push, push, Lolo. I know the pain is much, but we are always almost there. One more time, Lolo. Just last time, we are almost there. I'm tired. Yeah. I can't push again. I can't push again. I'm don't tired. say that, Lolo. Please, don't just close your eyes. We have come so far that quitting is not an option. I am feeling sleepy. You sleep, you let one eyelid bend, you will end up breaking this baby. Remember who you are in Umedele Kingdom. A king's wife is seen as the strongest woman in the kingdom. Please, Lolo, just push. Yeah, just push. try. Push. 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 Oh. Ah. Yes, yes. Ah. Lolo, you are doing good. We are progressing. The baby is coming. The baby is coming. Push. Wise one, I don't understand all of this. First of all, why is it that the gods did not choose this kingdom for the arrival of that great gift? Secondly, why is it that we are suffering the effects of what is happening in another kingdom? Why? Simple. We are interlinked with the other kingdom. The gods did not choose this kingdom for that great arrival. For reasons best known to them, the gods are wise. You don't have to question them. Uh, uh, you may go ahead and break the news to the king. Lola has given birth to a baby girl. That is not a problem. A child is a child, irrespective of the sex. I will just inform the king. Hmm? Not too fast, nine. There is another dimension to it that you need to see before you will know what you tell the king. What is it by this? What is it? Something strange. The baby came out from the mother's womb with a cowrie on this hand. I've never seen such a thing. What does that mean? I don't know. You have to come and see it yourself.
the kind of rainfall that descended on this earth Wednesday was not ordinary. What do you mean? By the way, do we have different forms of rainfall? That rainfall of yesterday may have damaged something somewhere. It is possible that it may have killed somebody. Why are you scaring me with all these your words? Why? By the way, why are you reading extra meaning into ordinary, ordinary rainfall? You will not understand. Understand what? The only thing I can tell you for now is that the great gift has arrived. We should be rejoicing. <laughs> hey, man, I called you here to know if the men in castle have taken a decision on the gallery that came with the baby. Yes, the men are still making inquiries on it. And the only thing we have managed to get is that that cowrie is the secret cowrie. And we are not supposed to be discussing it. Yes. Ogebem. Omalicham. Otom. Ogomam. Odalamichiakam. You're getting me shy. My beauty, you don't need to be shy. It is coming from my heart. You mean the word to me. Usom, same here. You mean the word to me too. I don't know what I would have done without you. You see, I've really missed you. I missed you too. I'm sorry the farming season has kept me busy. You know, you have to make it up to me. Sure, I will. You know. So can we start? Um, bam, 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 bam. Stop! Usom, stop! What are you doing? It's an open place. Or do you want us to get caught? So what? I promised to marry, didn't I? That's what you always tell me. And that brings me to this question. When are you coming to see my parents? Uh, uh, Ijem. My beauty. You know, this is not something I have to do in a hurry. I will come and see your parents as I promised. I'm making preparations already. Two years, and you're still making preparations. That's what you always say. Soon. Soon. Be patient, my love. So I hear you say patient. Ijema, Ijema, please wait. Ijema, wait. Stupid girl. Why marry you when I have you at my disposal? Why would I want to marry a woman as loose as you are? Anyway, since it did not work out for me today, let me go and try you, Rema. Jam. Mba, mba. Not today. Biko. I am not in the mood for your rubbish. Ijem, why are you like this? You know you're the only woman that has the key to unlock my heart. Why am what? I like how? And how has that become your business? Hmm? Who is the woman that has the key to unlock it? I have warned you. Stay away from me. Leave me alone. I have warned you before to stay away from me. Ijama, you know I love you so much. Why are you like this? Please talk to me. Ijem, I love you with all my heart. <sighs> You're the only woman that can slap me and walk away like this. <laughs> it 
It's okay. I wish you all the best. I love you. How are you today? I'm very well, Father. You? Even if there is a storm, everything comes to a standstill once I set eyes on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father, must you always praise me? And if I fail to praise you, my beautiful daughter, who then will I praise? The gods, of course. I praise them every day mm. for giving me such an amazing beauty like you are. I couldn't have asked for anything different. <laughs> there he goes again. Have you seen the meat I asked the Dinta to send across to you? Yes, Father. I already instructed one of the maidens to butcher it. I want to use the meat and prepare something very special for you today. Thank you very much. Because the girls didn't just give me a beautiful woman. They only gave me a wonderful cook. Oh, Father. <laughs> Thank you very much. What is it? I have a message for you. It is amazing how the cowry has grown with you. How you have become such a wonderful bearer of the sacred cowry of our land. Messenger of the gods. What message this time? You want to venture into a trade, Father. Is that right? Yes, you are right. The gods are very specific this time. Whatever you do, Father, do not take advantage of anyone, else it wouldn't be a success. No one must lose for you to gain, Father. No one. I see. But it is not in my nature to cheat anyone or to take advantage of anyone. I know, Father. But you have to take this very seriously. I don't know why. I don't even know the nature of the trade you want to get yourself involved in. But the gods have spoken. They have made their points. I don't want you to ignore this message, Father. It's very important. Coming from you, messenger of the gods, the bearer of the sacred cowrie, then I will be a fool to ignore the message. I've heard what you said. Thank you very much, Father. You're welcome. I beg to be excused. I need to go back to what I was doing. Thank you for coming with the message. I sincerely appreciate it. Her mother was unable to leave to see her grow into a woman. She died when she turned a thin. I am still very marveled how the sacred cowrie has continued to grow with her. I still mourn your mother. But surely, you have become a perfect replacement. I love you, my child. The sacred one. The daughter of the gods. It is very brave of you to have summoned the courage to come to my house to make this request. Nay. I love your daughter so much. I am prepared to do the right thing with her. Oh, oh you've already done the right thing. You've already done the right thing by coming to my house. I wish young men of Omedili will be like you. <laughs> Nay, nah, everyone is unique in his or her own way. Of course, of course. Please. I beg to take my leave. Oh, you want to go? But be rest assured that your visit will not be in vain. I just hope that Ijemma will not throw this opportunity away. We are offering you 50 bags of money, Your what? Highness. 
50 bucks of money. <laughs> Just to let you fish in our river. Exactly. Yes. No, no, no. Wait. Let me get this straight. Hmm? Men of Enugu hmm? you mean you are willing to pay a whooping sum of 50 bags of money? Yes. <laughs> Just for us to allow you to fish in our river. <laughs> Your Highness. Okay. Let me put it this way, Your Highness. All you need to do is to persuade your elder brother, the king, to issue a notice that men of Obunoago should no longer fish in that river. We want to secure the river for our entire business, fishing business, Your Highness. The entire river. Yes. Exactly, Your Highness. We are going to feed the fishes with special food that will make them to grow big, not only for our use, but for commercial purposes. Exactly. <laughs> hmm, I see. So you are willing to pay 50 bags of money in return? <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> well, my brothers, with 50 bags of money, Opunagu River, the entire river is all yours. <laughs> <laughs> we have a deal. <laughs> uh, we have a deal. <laughs> Um, your Highness, are you saying your brother, the king, will not have a problem with this? <laughs> Leave my brother to me. Go home and relax. I will bring you good news. <laughs> okay, Your Highness. We will take you by your words. As soon as your brother, the king, gives his consent. Can you go for us, sir? Be rest assured that you will hear from me soon. <laughs> very well then. We shall be on our way. Thank you very much for your hospitality. If only you had accepted to drink some palm wine, then the hospitality would have been complete. <laughs> uh, your Highness, <coughs> you see, we did not accept the palm wine because uh, we were not sure if our mission here is going to be possible. Uh -huh. But now that it is possible, <laughs> Your Highness, be rest assured that next time we come, we shall all feast here. Yes. We'll be feasting here, Your Highness. The deal is a deal. <laughs> May the gods of our ancestors lead you back to Enugu. He said. Go in peace, my brother. Thank you, Your Highness. Oh, man. 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 Fifty thunderous bags of money. No. That's a lot of money. <laughs> this cannot wait. Ibekwe must hear this. You must be very insane to think that I would subscribe to that nonsense. So Ibekwe, are you going to sit and watch 50 bags of money slip out of our fingers just because you want to protect river and some useless fishes? Now let me remind you at home, in case you have forgotten so soon. That river is not only our source of water, it is also our source of livelihood. Our river is one of the largest water bodies in Olunigo. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself why men of Enugu Olona will travel all the way from their kingdom to ask for our river? Have you? Now let me warn you, that river is perhaps the greatest gift the gods of this land, Chukokike, has given to these people. And it will be an abomination to stop our people fishing in their own river. I will not even give that river away for 100 bags of money. I will not! Ibekwe, let me ask you. Since you became king, what have you achieved for this kingdom? How dare you ask me such a question? No, Ibekwe! The truth they say, it's bitter, isn't it? Yes! What have you achieved for this kingdom? Tell me what have you achieved? If you're not busy making unnecessary peace, you are busy giving away the little resources our father left for us to hunt his garden. Lazy villagers. 
now that you have been offered a chance to become the richest in this kingdom and beyond. Now you are here talking about to quit. You dare call my efforts at bringing peace and tranquility into this kingdom unnecessary? Has it gotten to this, Akum? Has it? Yes, keep it quick. It has gotten to this. And more will come. Now let me warn you for the last time. Go back to the men of Enugolona. Tell them that even if they end up offering their hearts and kidneys on a plate, I will not give my consent. Now get out of my palace before I do something that both of us will regret for the rest of our lives. Get out! Ibiwe, did I hear you say I should get out of the oh, palace? Oh yes, you heard me loud and clear. <laughs> Big brother, in case you have forgotten, this palace was built by our father and not you. So I have equal rights. Get out. I said, get out of this palace this minute. Then if you insist, I will. But I will be back when the time is right. Fifty bags of money, my foot. I will be back when the time is right. Go and come. And I will be waiting for you with the same answer. Go and come back. Father. My princess, there is nothing to worry about. All is well. It doesn't look that way. I heard voices. Pay no heed to Akum and his temper tantrums. He will come around soon enough. I don't think you saw the look on his face when he stepped out of here. What is he going to do? Kill someone? Certainly not. My daughter, please tell me about your day. How did your day go? You look exceptionally beautiful today. Father, you are changing the topic. I am not changing the topic. Just that it doesn't deserve the attention you're giving to it. Like I told you, there is nothing to worry about. All is well. I am your father. Take me by my words. Now let's discuss more face lifting matters. I personally don't like it when you frown. And you should know that the princess of this kingdom has no reason, no excuse whatsoever to be frowning. Father, I still cannot help but worry about it. You don't have to, my daughter. All is well. I am not going to marry him. And I mean it. You will not marry him. I don't want to marry him. I won't allow you to marry him. I'm not going to marry him. What are you saying? You mean you will allow that fine, handsome man slip through your fingers? Is he the only young man in this village? Why are you so fixated on him? I don't want to marry him. He's marriage by force. Marriage is not by force. True. But have you told me you don't want to get married? Did you tell me you don't want to get married, Ijeb? I never said that. There was never a time I said that, Papa. I did not say I don't want to get married. But you see this young man in particular, I do not love. I would not marry. And my answer is no. He and you remain no. He he a word is enough for the wise. I found them not even. I don't understand this. I don't understand why parents will always want to interfere in their children's marriages. We are the ones getting married, aren't we? Yet they end up putting themselves at the center of it all. It's not fair. The man has practically taken upon himself to make my personal life his own personal business. I don't get it. We are the ones that will live with this man. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so why impose on us the man to marry? I think it's about time we spoke up against this madness. Enough is enough. Spoke up against 
Yes. How? No. Are you suggesting we start up an open protest against our parents? No. Very far from that. In fact, I have a better option. My friend, whatever option it is you have, so long as it will work, I am all in for it. Because as I speak to you, I am more frustrated than the word frustration itself. Now that I think of it, we've always had power at our disposal, but we never thought of exercising it. Power at our disposal? Yes. I don't understand. Can you be clearer? Fine. The princess of Omedili Kingdom is our best friend, isn't she? Yes, she's our best friend. Oh! Now you're beginning to see things from my own point of view. I think it's about time we paid her a visit. Hmm. You are very correct. Completely. I agree hmm. with you. It's too much. <sighs> That's by the way. Hmm. I have a wine in the kitchen. Spiced just the way you like it. Hey. Hey mama. Mm. You know just how to cheer me up. Darling. What are friends for? Oi. We'll be right back. They say problem shared is half solved. Thank the gods I came to her. Men of Enugolona. Oh, hi, Dennis. I sent for you because I have news for you. Good news, I hope. Well, good and bad. Well, your highness, let's, let us hear the good news first. Exactly. Okay. The good news is that my brother has finally accepted your request. <laughs> oh, Google! <laughs> Fish him! The bad news is that he said 50 bags of money is not enough for a kingdom to give away a river. So he is now requesting for 100 bags of money. Gods of ancestors. Your Highness. Yeah. Your Highness, did I. Did, did, did I just hear you right? 100 bags of what? 100 bags of money. But then again, if I may ask, I would say you think about it. Because 100 bags of money is nothing to compare with what you stand to gain from Opunago River. Your Highness, but that is a lot of money. Your Highness, it will cost our kingdom. It will cost our kingdom an arm to provide. You should be rejoicing that he finally agreed on 100 bags of money. Initially, he was insisting on 200 bags of money, but had to plead and plead again. Well, uh, uh, your, your Highness, I, I must tell you, I'm speechless. Yes, I am speechless. Well, Your Highness, I have to thank you for your effort. The most important is that he has agreed. Your Highness, we have to be on our way now. As you already know, that uh, journey is far. But uh, nevertheless, you will hear from us. I shall be expecting your message. The sooner the better, before he changes his mind. Once again, thank you very much. You have our word on that, Your Highness. May the gods be with you as you go. You say. You say Please, my princess, you have to help us. Before we lose it, my princess, please. You believe I have the power? Yes. How do you mean? Your father is the king. All we're asking is that you get him to make a decree that prevents parents from interfering with their children's marriages, at least to a certain degree. Exactly, my princess. 
We are speaking from experience. In fact, from my own point of view, parents shouldn't be imposing spouses on their daughters. We ladies must be allowed to make our own choices. On a very serious note, this has become a big issue in our land. A serious one. Especially for us, the maidens. The fastest way to kill a maiden is by forcing her into marrying a man she does not love. My princess, you're a maiden like us. If you can get your father to make this declaration, you will also benefit from it. Is something wrong? Not at all. Chukwu Kike has made everything beautiful for us. Just that most times, we focus on the wrong things instead of the right ones. You're speaking of her. Can you at least make things clear to us? Do not worry, Ijema. For in due time, the gods will make everything clear to you. Me. Yes. You. I am lost. I do not understand. All I have to say is that a maiden's father is like a deity to her and must be allowed to have that deity figure over his child. For what he sees seated, you will not be able to see it even if someone shows it to you. Are you saying you're not going to grant our request? Listen, you might be exempted from all this because of your status in the society. But we the commoners are going through moments of agony. Please. Get your father to make this declaration. Even if you do not support it, for our sakes, do it. That will not be necessary, Ijema. For in truth, parents must be allowed to parent their children. All I have to say is that a maiden's father is like a deity to her and must be allowed to have that deity figure over his child. For what he sees seated, you will never be able to see it even if someone shows it to you. I'm happy that once again, my eyes behold the sacred cowry. Our kingdom will continue to obtain favor from the gods. It is still the same as it has been from the days of old. Hold it as if you are holding cola nuts and ask the gods and ancestors for anything. It will be granted to you. Thanks for your ministration, as and why. I appreciate your coming. As you continue to serve as the priestess of this land, the gods and the ancestors of this kingdom will make your load slighter. Luck will always shine on you in everything you do. Bobe Bogon, 
Your Highness, the first rain of the year has come and gone, which means it's time for the farmers of Umedili Kingdom to start tilling the ground. As it has now become the, the norm in our land, considering the, the blessings that come with it, we have come to ask you to lead us in prayer on the sacred cowrie in blessing our land so that we can have successful farming season and fruitful harvest. I understand what you are saying. The importance of the prayer on the sacred cowrie. We have seen the good and we have equally seen the bad. Exactly. Good in the sense that we have seen how good our harvest will always turn out to be when we pray on the sacred cowrie. And how bad, how poor it will always be when we ignore making the prayer. I am sorry that I wasn't the one that called for this. Reason being that my queen is not feeling fine. I would have loved her to be part of the prayers. But now that you are here with this request, I think the ideal thing for me to do is to go and bring the sacred cowrie so that we can make the prayers without the queen. Uh, we are sorry, please, Your Majesty. We are sorry to hear this. Uh, since Owadife is attending to her, she will be fine. Just give me a few minutes. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> What? What? Where could it be? Obudanyo, asimo obudanyo, mata kiri bera pagasi ya mechasi ya mechasi. Needless to tell you why I summoned you here. I believe you have heard the news making the rounds. Tell me, who is that beast that had the gods to steal the sacred cow from the box of the gods? Who? Your Majesty, all is well. I beg your pardon? No, is this supposed to be an insult? How can you say this? The sacred cowrie is an instrument of the ancestors, handed down to us by our forefathers from generation to generation. As we speak, it remains the highest weapon any man can wear against his enemy. For any man who wears the sacred cowrie is in direct contact with the gods. And he knows exactly what his enemies are planning, even the move they are about to make. Umedli Kingdom has come to command not just the respect, but even the fear of other kingdoms around us. Do you know why? Because we remain the only land in Olunibo that has the sacred cowrie. Now the sacred cowrie has gone missing in my land. And you sit here before me to tell me that all is well? Onyeze. What happened is natural. It happens once in a while. Agreed. Your father did not tell you. Because it did not happen during his reign. But count yourself a lucky king that it happened during your reign. What can I, I am losing my patience with you. How can I count myself a lucky king when the sacred cowry is missing under my reign? What kind of luck is that? The gods have withdrawn the sacred cowry for fortification. Yes. Your Majesty, this is a sacred process. And this process is good for you. 
Monica, I, I have two questions for you. Number one, when will I get the secret cowry back? Number two, why didn't they warn me about this all important process of fortification before withdrawing the secret cowry from the past of the gods? Why? Oh, yes. I can only plead with you. Do not question the gods. The ways of the gods are not the ways of men. As for how the cowry will return, a special child will be born in Umedili. That child will come out of his or her mother's womb with a sacred cowry strapped on his or a hand. Your Majesty, that child shall be the messenger of the gods. If a male, he will not be initiated into the masquerade court of Medele because he is already the spiritual head of the masquerade from birth. Okay. So, what happens if the child is a female? If a female? Mm. Your Majesty, if a female, she will become a special daughter of the kingdom who can summon the king and the king must answer her. Mm. This woman can make decisions for the whole kingdom without consulting anybody. And whatever decision she makes stands. Onyeze, I want you to listen carefully to what I am about to tell you because this is the climax of it all. I'm listening. The sacred cow is going to be on a mission when it returns. A mission to restore sanity in a land that is joined with us in the spirit. Whoever is born with a sacred cowry must be with it always. Your Majesty, the sacred cowry will return to the box of the gods when its mission is completed. And the person, when he finally decides to take a wife, or become a wife. So, what you are saying to me directly is that the sacred cowry will be allowed to remain in the custody of the person? Onyeze, the sacred cowry must be left with the child the way it is when the child was born. It must always be with the person. It will continue to grow with the child. Onyeze, everything will become clearer to you as the years unfold. Johannes, I heard the tank crier. Is there a problem? Why have we summoned all the pregnant women and their families? Is she? Eh? The gods have revealed how the missing sacred cowrie will be recovered. That is why I sent for everyone. Okay. It sounds so interesting, Your Highness. How will it be recovered? The gods have revealed, after my inquiries, okay. that a special side is coming into this kingdom. That side is going to come with the sacred cowrie because he or she will be born with it. Johannes, it's, 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 
This is, this is more complicated. How will a child be born with a cowrie? It may sound impossible, but that is the verdict of the gods. And we all have a duty to ensure that any woman in this kingdom who bears a child with a sacred cowrie must bring words to this palace immediately. That child is a special child and must be welcomed by everybody in our middle kingdom. Your Highness, honestly, this is confusing. The more reason I ask the town crier to go around the town and announce. Because I want every pregnant woman okay. in this kingdom, yes. the husbands of the pregnant women, even their family members. In fact, I want everyone to be present as I make the announcement. Okay. Well, whoever bears that child that comes with the sacred cowrie must report immediately. And this must not be taken for granted. That mm. child is a messenger of the gods, mm. whether male or female. And we, whatever family that he or she comes from will be promoted in this kingdom to be one of the frontline families of the land. Indeed, the ways of the gods are not the ways of men. I was prepared to elevate that family to one of the leading families of this kingdom. And then, the special side comes from my family. My daughter has the power to make decisions for this kingdom. Decisions that nobody must disobey. But she has elected not to use her power. I owe everything to the gods for giving me such a special child. I can't wait for the day she will be married so I could retrieve the sacred cowrie from her. Your friends are gone now, I suppose? Yes, they have. Why were you eavesdropping, Father? You knew? You thought I wouldn't know? You temporarily forgot yourself at that time, I suppose? You see, you are that special one. And you have the right to give anything, any interpretation you like. I, I, I so much felt happy with what I heard. I mean, what you were telling your friends. You proved one more time that you are that gift of the gods to me. And here and now, I am asking you to make a request. Ask me anything you want me to do, and I swear on the staff of the kings that I will do it for you. Thank you very much, Father, but you don't need to do that. You don't owe me nothing. You are my father. I'm only a servant of the gods. I agree. But you must have to understand you are Princess Ifedisha of our Umedele Kingdom. You deserve the best, my dear. Father, being your daughter is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I am fulfilled. Are you aware that had it been you asked me to make that decree? You would have done it without any hesitation. But then again, I stand by the truth. I will never use my position to guard you into doing something that is not right. Your wisdom is of the gods. And I praise the gods for giving you such wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> Father, I made something very delicious for lunch. Just for you and me. And I want you to come with me. What did you prepare? It's a surprise. <laughs> Okay. After you. Thirty bags of money is a whole lot of money. Shh. You are your voice. I call all of us here because I want us to discuss privately. Want to shout? Um, wait, wait, wait a minute. Your Highness, are you saying that men of Enugu Olona are prepared to offer us a staggering sum of 30 bags of money just to get part of our river? Exactly. That is what His Highness has just said. Wow. 
30 bags of money is a whole lot of money. In Ibo land, death is seen as the physical separation of the living from the dead. We believe that death is just a transition into the spirit world, which is in a continuous relationship with the physical world. But we always ensure that the relationship between the physical and the spiritual world remains cordial for our loved ones when they pass. Is that Lucy? I am a man of this land and I know our traditions. If you knew them, Jidofo, why have you refused? to buy the cow for the transition funeral rite of your late father. Why call yourself a man of my land and you still allow the spirit of your buried father to continue hovering around? Ezra Lucy, it is not as if I don't want to do this Right. My problem is that I don't have money. But please, I promise that as soon as I sell enough baskets to afford the cow, I will do it. Please. Jidofo, I came personally to tell you that the spirit of your late father is becoming restless. You need to buy that cow as soon as possible. This is for your own good. Your late father's spirit needs to join his ancestors so as to make ways for you. Your Highness, I know what my share of that money will do for me. You have my support. 30 bucks of money indeed is a huge sum of money. But then, should we be selling off the one free gift of nature? Chuku Abiyama gave Obunago kingdom. Hmm? Come to think of it, people of Eunugu Olona have been coming here to fish and we've never asked them to leave. Why should they now want to finally buy off the river and bar us from coming to fish from our own river? <laughs> I don't think the the, 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 the suggestion is, is, is good. My brother, somehow you are right. But then, 30 bucks of money can do a lot for this kingdom. Yes. You yes. can say that again. And you have my support on that. Money is indeed powerful. Yes. Now, if not, why would the people of Enugu or Nona summon enough courage to visit our land and make such an offer? Uh, uh, a good Nogu. Whether the people of Enugu or Nona once the or needs the entire river or part of it, I don't care. Ever since we have that river, what have we gained from it? Apart from the small fishes that we get for soup that is not even enough for our families. Is that what we want as men? This is our opportunity to make good money from our river. And we are not going to miss that opportunity. We are collecting that money and that is final. Well, I called us because you all occupy different positions of authority in this land. I have done my duty by informing you. It's up to you to make sure money enters Oponago. Well, 
I will be on my way. Thank you, Your Highness. You are indeed sent by the gods. <laughs> Thank you, you for most, the useful information. You are most welcome. We have a king, quite right. But I see all of you as stakeholders of this land. Let us do what is right. Money is important. Oh, yes. A good empire. <laughs> 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 I am not going to bother myself with whatever interpretation anybody wants to give to this. As far as I am concerned, this is a huge achievement. And I am going to celebrate it, especially with my one and only Ego <laughs> Ibo. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yes. You and women, today is Amaka. Tomorrow is Ego Ibo. <laughs> yes. That reminds me. What happens to Ego Ibo's sister that you promised me? I will not allow it. Ah, you are. <laughs> Seriously, you have to do something about it. All right. I am not in support of this. And believe me, this will not end well. What part of it will not end well? Is it the part where our kingdom becomes one of the rich kingdoms around? Or the part that you start to benefit from it all? Ego Dinogu, I am beginning to misunderstand your motives. Where exactly are you headed? Have you tried to overlook the monetary part and give it a thought? Don't you think that Prince Akum would be a fool to give these people the whole river and bar us from coming to fish from our own river? If I come to think of it, Prince Akum is a fool for even suggesting to sell off the whole river. Why are you calling him a fool? Why? Look at me. Since my father died, I have not been able to afford enough money to buy the cow for his final transition right. The other day, Ezalosi visited me and said that my late father's spirit will soon begin to haunt me because of that. That cow can be bought with less than one bag of money of which you and I know that if the people of Enugu-Oloma pay for that river that we stand the chance to benefit from it at least there is no way I will not get two bags of money from it I understand your plight my friend but then are we going to watch another kingdom take what rightfully belongs to us because of money. There is one thing I know. The gods are just. If you don't have money to purchase a cow for your father's funeral rite, they will help you. They will stand by you. Ego Dino, do you know how many times I have been having sleepless nights because of that cow? If the gods are just, like you said, why didn't they provide the money long time ago? As a matter of fact, why did they even allow my father to die? Listen to me. That business is my only hope. And anyone who stands in my way, I will put him down. He who has a, let him hear. This is not right. This is not right at all. Have you ever heard that? A kingdom sold her river. Where? I cannot sit back and watch this happen. An elder does not sit at home and watch a pregnant goat deliver in Tita. And who is the elder? You? Please do not provoke me to further arguments. They are illegal. Hundred packs of what? Your Highness, that is exactly what they are demanding. How? Oh. I mean, how? Your Highness, according to the Prince Akum, Igwe Ibekwe has accepted our request. What is insisting that? He cannot give out the river for a mere 50 bags of money. That the river is worth more than the 50 bags. 
that if we want to have a total and unlimited access to the river, we must pay a hundred bags of money. Are they aware? I mean, is he aware that this request is coming from me directly? No, Your Highness, not yet. We decided not to reveal the buyer for us to have a better back in. The gods are very specific this time. Whatever you do, Father, do not take advantage of anyone. Else, it wouldn't be a success. No one must lose for you to gain, Father. No one. Well, Edas, you will do me one favor. You will go back to Obunagun and let them understand that I am not interested in the entire river. In fact, it is inconceivable for anybody to even think a thing like that. Let them understand that I am only interested in a portion of the river. The portion that I intend to secure with giant nets. Where I will keep the fishes that I will feed in a special way for them to grow giant for commercial purposes. The people of the land can continue to fish in their water. But outside the secured area, if you are able to go back to them and give them this explanation, I am sure Igwe Beko will realize that 50 bags of money that I have offered is just very good for that request. Your Highness, are you sure this is what you want? I am very sure. In fact, there is no way anybody will ask the people not to fish in, in their river. Asking for such is calling for trouble. I am not a troublemaker. We'll do what you said and get back to you. Either you call yourself to order and ask yourself some key questions. Why have you refused to listen to the voice of reason? Voice of reason, you say, Papa. So marrying Obiekunye is listening to the voice of reason. Marrying him means doing the right thing. And let me ask, if I do not marry him, the sky will fall, right? If I do not marry Obiyeku, will Umedili be wiped away from the face of the earth? I am asking you, Papa. Tell me the truth. What is the deal with Obiyeku? Why are you so obsessed with him? <coughs> you are my daughter, Ijama. Whatever I do or ask you to do is for your own good. Listen, let me tell you. One does not know the value of what he has until he loses it. But not in this one. Not in this one. Leave me alone. Not in this one. What have I done to you? Tell me, what did I do to you? I told you that I don't want to marry you. Yet you went and met with my father. On what grounds? To achieve what? Hey, Gemma, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean to cause you any trouble. See, I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing by going to your father to... I, I did that because that is the only way I can show you how much I love you. I, I didn't mean to hurt you, please. I am sorry. Forgive me. Don't you I, think it's rather too late? Yes. The harm has been done already. As a matter of fact, you have succeeded in taking away my peace of mind in my own father's house. Now my father thinks that you're the only young man in this village that any woman should get married to. Gemma, seriously, I do not know what to say. You don't need to say anything, Obiekunye. You don't need to say anything. Now let me tell you. Go to my father and call off whatever it is you have in my father. Because I will not and I will never marry you. Even if you don't want to do it for anything. Do it for my peace of mind. Give me back my peace in my father's house. I will not come here and warn you again. If you let me come back here, you will not like what I will do. I mean it. If you, if you let me come back here again, you will not like what I will do to you. Yes. Nice. 
Are you sure of what you are saying? Your Highness, I'm a nobleman of Obunago Kingdom. I know what it means to lie to a man that bears the caduceus of our ancestors. Really? So if I ask you to swear on the caduceus of our ancestors, that my brother is planning to betray his people by selling off their river to another kingdom, you would be able to swear on the caduceus? Your Highness, I swear by the gods, and I speak nothing but the truth. As I speak to you right now, your brother has made a tempting offer to some jobless men of this land, and I believe they may revolt against you. What? Revolt against me? Your Highness, I am sorry to be the bearer of such heart-wrenching news. A young man. Your Highness. What family are you from in this kingdom? I hail from the family of Ibuamaka in Obiaza village. And who is your father? My father was the great Emenike in Obunago kingdom. Did you say was? Yes. He died last year. I see. I'm so sorry about that. Thank you, Your Highness. Ego Dinogo. Your Highness. Do you remember that personal bodyguard of mine that died during the last famine season? Yes, you mean the one that fell from palm tree in Oboland. We call him the king's right hand man. Exactly. I have not been able to replace him because I have not found any worthy of that position. But now I think I've seen one. Now? Stand up. This is the ancient caduceus of our ancestors. All this end and repeat after me. Repeat after me. Repeat after me. Just as I have demonstrated before the king. Just as I have demonstrated before the king. I swear by the ancient caduceus of our ancestors. I swear by the ancient caduceus of our ancestors. That I would make the interest of this kingdom a priority at all times. That I will make the interests of this kingdom a priority at all times. I swear. I, I swear. I swear. That on no account will I betray this kingdom and the king. That on no account will I betray this kingdom and the king. Ego Dinogu. My king. You have just proven to be a noble man of this kingdom. A man who stands for nothing other than what is right. And a man like that is no other than the king's right hand man. Yeah, yeah. He has demonstrated the rare quality I have been looking for. And I have promoted him to the vacant position as the right hand man of the king. He would be the last person to see the king before he sleeps. And as always, he would be the first to see the king as he wakes. I have spoken. Your Highness, we are not going to buy the entire river. Your people can still fish in their river. We want to secure 
a part of the river with strong net. This secured area is what we are paying for. Your people can still fish in the other part of the river. Get your king to make it criminal for anyone to fish in the secured area. Your Highness, based on the explanation Ichie Naka has just given, I think that 50 bags of money is enough to give us what we want, Your Highness. Well, in that case, I have to see my brother and get back to you. Oh, I'm sorry, my princess. Greetings. Greetings, favored of the king. Thank you. There must be something about him that moved the king. Akum, I have said it before and I am saying it again. The only thing that I can approve is that the men from Enungolona can come to our river anytime they want and fish and continue to pay fishing taxes to our people as they have always done. I will not allow them secure or buy off any portion of that river. Never! Give me Why are you so naive and stupid? You dare refer to a king as naive and stupid? How dare you? Are you sure you are even a king? Which king behaves this way? How can a king see prosperity and choose poverty instead? I'm not sure you're a king. It's as simple as that. Now get out of my palace before I throw you out this minute. Yes, I will leave because I know force is the only language you understand. But before I leave, let me drop a piece of advice. Ibiqwe, all through your reign as king, you have been making foolish decisions. You need to make a wise decision for once in your very stable life. If you ever, ever lift your filthy ass on me again, I will kill you and nothing will happen. I hate voices. Were you quarreling with anyone? Father, I am not comfortable with what I heard. I'm not. My dear, you have to be very comfortable. I am not after the whole river as a businessman. I am only after a sizable part of the river. Where I intend to secure with giant nets, in that portion, I will keep some fishes that I am... I am planning to feed specially for them to grow into giant fishes. Listen, it promises to be very good business for me. I'm glad to hear that, Father. Good. But the issue is that I am becoming so attached to the people of Okunago day by day. I don't understand. How do you mean you are becoming attached to the people of Okunago? What do you mean about them? In my dream, Mother appeared to me and introduced a man of Okunago as my husband. Ever since then, I have felt this connection with them. Are you sure the person you saw was your mother? I won't lie to you, father. So how is it possible? Your mother who died when you turned 18. I mean, your mother who knows everything about our tradition will appear to you and introduce a man of Obonago and call him yours. No, how is that possible? But I'm telling you the truth. If it is, do you know who you are? No, have you forgotten the position you occupy in this kingdom? You are a special child. You are a gift of the gods to this kingdom. You are a messenger of the gods and above all, you are the bearer of our sacred cowry. The sacred cowrie of our Umedili people. Father, Don't you know? 
I know that already. Must you make reference to that? Making reference to that because based on that alone, you're supposed to know that you cannot be married to another land. You cannot be married to a stranger. You should know that yourself. So why are you mentioning Obunagu to me? Father, can I ask you a question? Important question. Go ahead, I'm listening. If in truth, you see the people of Obunagu as strangers, why are you investing a whooping sum of 50 bags of money in their river? Oh, are you trying to tell me it's the river that attracted you to them? Is there anything I'm missing? To the best of my knowledge, I didn't lure you into this. You came to my house to ask for permission. Yes, Nai, yes, Nai. I know I came to your house to ask for permission to court and get married to your daughter. But I never asked you to make me a marital priority in her agenda. No. Now, if I use a wrong approach to make her marry me, then I don't love her. I am begging you, please. Please. Now, please. If you are in any way asking her or forcing her to marry me, please stop. I must say that I am dumbfounded. Where did you get your wisdom from? Why have you chosen to live life the way you do? I am a man in love. I want the best for the woman I love. If letting her go will make her happy, then so be it. But you came to ask for my permission. Yes, I, I know. I came to ask for permission. I never asked you for an assistant. Please, leave Ijema to live her life. The more unhappy you make her to be, the more the chances of us being together is reduced. I, I beg you, please, leave her. I said I'm sorry. I mean it. I am very sorry. Amobi, Kamwanugiu, if not for one thing, I wouldn't have honored your invitation today. I know. I know. Forgive me. My beauty. Ugebemu. All I'm asking for is a little time. Time? Yes. If only you know what your delay is costing me, you wouldn't be asking for any more time. How do you mean? Okay, you haven't heard. You haven't heard that there is a young man in this village who has vowed to do anything to have me. Even if it means getting my father to like him, you haven't heard. Who is that bastard in no, this village? No, no. That shouldn't be the question. The question should be, when am I coming to pay your bride price? That should be the question. I'm okay, let me ask you. You are rich. You are from a well-respected family in this kingdom. So, what, what, is, what is preventing you from coming to see my parents? What is it? Oh, yeah, so. Ijema, Ijema, I've told you. You have told me nothing. Absolutely nothing. Listen, Amobi. As usual, it is clear that this conversation of ours will lead to nowhere. I don't want to have problem with you today. Ijema. I wonder who she thinks she is. When you go up, there's always another option. I can go there. I can eat you up.
What kind of a dream is this? So if you quit things, you can mess up with 50 bags of money and get away with it. So he thinks he can just wake up one money and take decisions that affect other people's life and be okay with it. So apparently, I do not have equal rights as him. I, Akum, cannot also partake in making decisions that affect the kingdom, right? Why are you beating more than you can chew, Ibekwe? Why? I humble myself before the princess of Wabonaago. You are the glory of the king and he can kill because of you. I'm not out for all that now. My princess, how may we be of help? He sends for us. Go and call that nobleman that's humbled by father with his dedication to duty. I want to have a private meeting with him. Yes, okay, my, my princess. princess. I humble myself before the princess of my land, the jewel of the king. You will remain the greatest of all your age mates. I like the sound of that, but sincerely, I don't want to be the greatest. I just want to be a happy woman. And that you will get. You make others happy, and happiness will be your portion. Please sit. I'm sorry, my princess, but I cannot sit. You're the princess of my land. I cannot sit with you. Ego Dunugu, this is an order. I want you to sit in the same place you've always sat. I want us to talk. What do you want us to talk about? I want to get to know you more. Tell me everything you told my father that made him promote you to the position of his right hand man. Is this not the Senate of Petroya? How could he be this stupid? I cannot believe that Ego Dinogu can be this cunning and stupid. Yes, he's stupid. But I don't think we should make him relevant by discussing him. No, Daddy. We have to discuss him. In fact, he has given us a topic. He has provided a topic that we can discuss in a long while. Yes. My brothers, who then can we trust? Now, see, in my opinion, we have to handle this decisively as young men of this land. In fact, we have to teach Ego Dinogu a lesson he will never forget in a hurry. We have to deal with him decisively. Yes. Put him in a place where he rightfully belongs? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Obefine, did I hear you say put him in a place where he rightfully belongs? Yes. All right, let me ask you. How do you intend to do that? Or are you forgetting that he is a right hand man to the king? And as such, he is under the king's protection. Now, even if you're going to do anything to him, how do we manipulate the caduceus of the gods? Oh, Chidiadi. Chidiadi, why are you always behaving like a woman? I want What? That. Your tongue. Now tell me, does he sleep with the king? I hear. See, when we are ready to deal with Ego Dinogu, we will definitely get him. Yes. Ego Dinogu is a fool. And I will show him that there are different kinds of anger. Yes. The anger that flares bright like fire, consuming dry wood. 
I will show him that there is another kind of anger that dies as soon as it ignites. Then this kind of anger that takes its time to rise, then leaving devastation in its wake when it does. I will also show him that there is another kind of anger that is just there in the pit of your belly, biting and twisting endlessly, reminding you of its presence every waking moment. When it is time for us to end this betrayer, that is the kind of anger we will call to duty. Egodinogu has touched the tail of the tiger. And I will show him something that his father didn't witness. <coughs> My brothers, I want us to be specific here. How do we handle that betrayer? How? I have a plan. Oh. <laughs> you sent for me, the jewel of my king. You behave as if I'm a killer. Consent with me, please. My princess, if you want me to do anything for you, I can get one of the maidens to do it for you. I was busy when you called. I am of the guided opinion that anything you are doing can wait. My dear Igodinugo, why elect for a maiden to do something for me when you are here already? I am hoping you ask for something I can do for you. Um, I want us to discuss. Do you currently have a woman in your life? I have never thought of that. So why then are you pulling back from the woman that appreciates the man in you? Or are you indirectly telling me that you are not man enough? My princess, I can forget all things, but I can never forget that you are my king's jewel. I can surely dream dreams. But I believe that I do not have the mandate to dream of my king's jewel. You are thinking of having a woman, you said. So what is it you want in a woman? Does it mean she wants me? How will I handle her without offending the king? I know what you are thinking. Do you think I'm a child? Every night I keep imagining how it will feel like to have you test the money you owe me. <laughs> I don't know what has gotten into you. But I'm going to pretend that this never happened. I was busy doing something for the king before you sent for me. I can't believe this just happened. Did he just walk out on me? He turned me down and walked out on me. I can't believe that you can be this insensitive. Is this why you called me here to insult me? More like to talk some sense into you. Whether you like it or not, Akum, I am a noble man of this land. And there is nowhere I would have sat back and watched this insensitive action to take place. Do you know you are a disappointment? That a son of a prominent man of this kingdom had decided to choose to become an ordinary guard to the king. That is unheard of. Shame on you. At your age, if you cannot act with your brain, then there is no hope that you ever will. Ego Dinogu. You are a fool! I will deal with you! I'll come, let me break it down for you. I owe you no apologies! So it, it is now, Akum. You now call me by my name. If by now, if not noticed that I've lost respect I have for you, then you are a fool. Trying to strike the king's right hand man could cost you a lot, Akum. You are nothing but a mess servant to an unpopular king that is going down. 
And let me remind you that this money column popular bears the caduceus of the ancestors, which makes me legitimate and a powerful king by all standards. You calling him unpopular makes you sound more stupid and insane. Even thinking that you can sell the river that supplies us with the fish we eat makes you the unpopular one. Ego Dinogu, you are a fool. For every word you say here today, I will make you eat. Leave my compound oh, before you begin oh, to oh, eat them. Oh, oh, there is even a scheduled time for me to eat them. You are going to be the one to cook them, I presume. Leave my compound now. I will, I will leave your compound. It's your compound, isn't it? Leave! <laughs> You betraying son of the dark. You brainless bastard. You unfortunate son of a woman. Who do you think you are to betray the man that protects this kingdom from external invasion? What is this? And who do you call a betrayer? And why are you blocking my path? Are you pretending that you don't know the reason for our anger? Are you saying that you don't know what is going on here? Now! You saying you are not aware or you didn't know the meaning of betrayal? No! He's pretending not to know the meaning of deceit. The only thing I see are hoodlums blocking my way. And if you don't leave my way right now, I'll be forced to get very angry. What will you do? <laughs> Mm. Silence is the best answer to a fool. Leave my path now. Pass. Greetings, Father. I bow in greetings, distinguished elder in council. You are welcome, the chosen of the gods. And where is my damsel rushing after? Father, I want to go and see my friends. You want to go and see your friends to make amend, I suppose? I have not seen or heard from them after our last conversation, so I'm off to make amends. Is she not a wise woman? She is. Fine. I am ever grateful, eternally grateful to the gods for giving me a wonderful daughter just like you are. You have come again, Father. <laughs> Wisdom only comes from the gods. Hurry up, my hurry up then. Um, the gods will go with you. Must I repeat this every other time, Father? I have the sacred carry with me everywhere I go. I have no need for gods. Listen, Felicia. You might be a powerful woman. In fact, you may possess some spiritual powers and protection by the virtue of the sacred cowrie. Good and fine. But I'm going to be a fool to leave you to go out there without that mortal physical protection that I need. Just for peace of my own mind. I insist the guards will go with you. The guards! Oh, only, go with her. only on one condition. What is it? That they stay far away from me. No problem as long as they are there with you. Yes. Go with our guts. Why is it that she is always getting whatever she wants from me, even when she's wrong? Yes, because she is a chosen one from the gods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought she's meeting this young man for the first time today. Exactly my thoughts, but you have a problem with that. No, I don't. But she seems so free with him, like she has known him all her life. <laughs> By the time you understand that the princess is not just a maiden, but a direct representation of the gods, that will help you to realize that her methods mustn't be the same with other maidens. I think we should end this discussion immediately. <laughs> 
Why does it appear to me that you brought me out here just to make me laugh so hard? Well, I never <laughs> intended to make you laugh. But I'm happy you found my comments. Something to laugh about. <laughs> I have never seen a beauty so captivating as yours. <laughs> Noble man of my land, can you please quit the flattery and tell me why you halted me? Nothing serious. I just wanted to introduce myself to you as a common man who is mesmerized by your beauty. <laughs> but now that you've called me noble, I must say, I feel good. <laughs> you sure have your way with words, honestly. But I must confess, you indeed made my day, and I'm happy. Anyway, thanks for making my day. Hope to see you again. Uh, please, wait. Well, you see, when a man calls you hot, he's looking at your body. Mm. When he calls you pretty, he's looking at your face. But when a man calls you gorgeous, he's certainly looking at your clothes. <laughs> But when a man calls you beautiful, trust me, he sees everything. My name is Echazana, a child who never forgets his father. My princess, I must confess, your beauty can be compared to that of a goddess. And it is a lucky day for me, I mean, to finally meet a goddess face to face. You are beautiful. Echezona. Yes. Echezona. Well, my princess, I guess you were heading somewhere. I wouldn't want to delay you for that. But I just hope um, I might get this chance to talk to you some other time again. Where was I? God. Where was that we were going? My princess, we are going to pay your friend a visit. Oh, I forgot. Thank you. M Ma If the gods permit, we will surely meet again. It's nice meeting you. Be good. I had to warn him. I had to. I understand, my dear. Eh? Yeah? You know, that man was gradually becoming a thorn in my flesh. You don't understand, my friend. So, what exactly did he say to you? Oh, to be honest, I did not give him time to defend himself. I walked in there, gave him a piece of my mind, and I stormed out. Hmm. But, how can a man be so desperate? Eh? Is it that there are no other girls in this kingdom? I don't know. If the number of women in the world is more than that of men, like, like they used to say, I mean, why would a man be so fixated on one woman? There are so many fishes in the river. My point exactly. <laughs> See, look up. What is she doing here? Obodanyo, 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 Ob
Greetings, my friends. Your friends? Greetings, Princess Ifedichi. My friends, for every moment you remain angry, you give up a sizable chunk of your peace of mind. I have come all the way just to apologize. I am sorry. Please, do not push me away. Mm. I guess you're here to grant our request. Holding on to anger is like grasping a piece of hot coal with the intent of throwing it at another. You are the one who will get burnt. So let me guess. You're here to tell us to forget that we ever made any request mm -hmm. and pretend to be friends again. Okwaya? A man cannot eat anger for breakfast and sleep with it at night without suffering damage to his soul. In other words, we don't have right to be angry at you, okay? I never said so. You have every right to be angry. That is why I have come to say I am sorry. Forgive me, my friends. This friendship means a whole lot to me. Please. Mm -hmm. Ifediche, you should have thought of that before turning down our request. My friends, you seem to forget that I am a servant of the gods. Take a good look at me. Look beyond the regalia you see. And you understand that I do not have a life of my own. I don't. There are certain decisions I cannot take. Please, do not move away from me because of this. It's not worth it. Please. <sighs> It. What? Thank you very much. Does that mean forgiving? It simply means that we are not ready to throw our friendship away. Yes. Ijema, <laughs> just be calm. Very soon, you will understand the reason for all this. You are one lucky woman, you know. If I ask you to explain what you just said... Don't even ask, because you will not understand. Mm, I am not surprised. Ijima, let her be. Okay. Mm, I mean, let bygone be bygone. My friends, always remember that love is better than anger. Hope is better than fear. Optimism is better than despair. So let's be loving, hopeful, and optimistic. Then we will rule the world. Ifediche, you know something? My love for you would have died a long time ago if not for your way with words. Exactly. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. For the one who is devoid of the power to forgive is also devoid of the power to love. There is an element of good in the worst of us and some bad in the best of us. Once we understand this, we will be less prone to hating our enemies. Strong words, I must say. Just so you know, you are not my enemy. So take notes. Thank you. Now I'm fully forgiven. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we are getting there. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. That reminds me. Ever since I got here, I've been itching to tell you something. <clears throat> Mm. What is it? I met a young man on my way here. He captured every bit of my attention with his choice of words. Who? He did. Yeah. Who? Why are you sounding like a broken drum? You mean one man was able to overpower three able 
bodied young men of my life. And you expect me to believe that? Your Highness, this has nothing to do with overpowering us. I'm suspecting that there's something behind it. Your Highness, as we speak, Obiefuna and Jidofo are in critical condition. I am here because I ran for my life. I have never seen anything like that. I can't believe this. Jidari, did I hear you say you ran? Your Highness, I am not ashamed to say it. Considering the condition I found myself, there was nothing I could do, Your Highness. You had the opportunity to bring down the most foolish man in Okunago. And you are here telling me that you ran. Jidari, what kind of a man are you? Tell me, what kind of a man are you? Oh, gods of my land. Your Highness, if you were there, you wouldn't have been able to withstand him. I had to run for my life, Your Highness. Jidari, pray! Pray that we find another lasting solution to this soon. If not, if not, do not destroy all I have worked for. Your Highness! Your Highness! Your Highness! Who are you? And what's the meaning of this? Your life is in danger. What? What's the meaning of this? Listen, woman. You can't just walk in here and do what you just did and walk out without a reasonable explanation. This is the palace of Obunago Kingdom. How did you get in here? And who are you? I know you believe in the existence of Mama Kechuku, the guardian angel. You can call me one. Already know is Ifonye Meta Obulu, the blind eyes that sees even in the dark, the erosion that carries away the altar of peace, the evil egg that broke the stone of unity. I remain the only one that says no when others have said yes. I am not only seeing your brother, but I am equally seeing a young man. Hey, for you, Metalo. I am happy that you are saying something. I know solution will come from this outer. What do you want from my altar? If you are metal. What we are talking about here is war and I need to win. My brother thinks he can control everything in the kingdom. He thinks he can take decisions that are unfavorable to others. 
It thinks it can deny me of my right to be rich. Ibekwe is beginning to stand on my way. Look at me. Is this how I'm supposed to be? If I am counted among the wealthy men in this kingdom, will our river dry up? I came here because there's something you can do. That is why I ask you what you want from my altar. There is something about the young man your brother recently made his right hand man. From what I can see. You cannot get to the king without passing through that young man. So I suggest you go back and get him off the way. If you metalo. I have tried to put him in his rightful place, but all to no avail. To me, Ego Dinogu is a riffraff. And I have decided to leave him and go straight for the king. Let me break it down for you, Prince Akum. I said, you cannot get to the king without passing through that young man. There is a connection of deep protection and the cord is mighty. And what exactly do you mean? The only option left is for you to go back and get rid of him. Asking him to leave as you've done already, can never work out until he is meant to leave. Are you ready to kill Ego Dinogu? A life that has brought me nothing but frustration. I am ready. In the bag of a medicine man, Wait for me. Chukulum Kambia. Anu Kube, Anu. Anu Kalimuka, Anu. Anu Kube, Anu. Liko Monye Budi, baby. Anu Wau. Even a man, those that suspended peace from my eyes have no right to be in peace. When I decide to sell anything, nobody can stand on my way. And that is it. Take it. How do we explain this mystery? A clay pot as small as this to be this heavy. The power that will kill that young man must be very heavy. And that is what you have with you. Go home with it and make use of it tonight. So what and what do you want me to do? All you have to do is to look into that pot 
and call his name three times. Once the power leave to locate him, he must surely die. It must surely kill that Pharaoh. And the clock of that power will return to this spot. I will do it tonight. And I will give you feedback tomorrow. Or unfailingly, the day after tomorrow. And one more thing. Once the power returns and the pot is as heavy as it is, before it departed, it means that the young man did not die. Do not attempt again until you set your eyes on that man face. I know the weight I felt when you handed me the pot. That fool that has refused to leave when he was advised cannot stand it. Thanks for everything. I had known that I will always count on you. I know pa. I dream about one man and the next thing I meet another and literally fall for him at first sight. What exactly is going on with me? Why one man haunts my dreams, the other haunts my reality? Gods of our land, is something wrong with me? How am I supposed to handle this? I mean, sitting right here, I can't help but desperately yearn to see each other again. But then, I'm also curious to find out who the young man who haunts my dream is. What am I supposed to do? I know you believe in the existence of Mom and Kechuku, the guardian angel. Who is the person that can interpret this dream? Haven't I been able to get you off my mind? I don't even know you well enough, yet I'm beginning to fall for you. And what kind of a man are you? What man goes straight to the father of a woman he loves to disclose his intentions first before anything? Oh, gods of our land. I want to love and I want to love with everything in me.
that's exactly what I want us to discuss. Why are you disturbed? Isn't it obvious to you that you brought this upon yourself? Papa, be cool. Can we just talk about something else? Hmm. Can we change this topic? Listen, Ijama, I am no longer insisting that you marry him. Nobody is insisting that you marry him. But if there is anything I must reiterate, that young man still loves you. I, I was doing something at the backyard if I came to talk with you. Can I please go back and continue? doing in my room it took you just one appearance to humble my father is there anything too difficult for you to understand what is the meaning of this is the princess out of her mind are you just going to stand there and pretend you don't know why I'm here come into the bed we have a lot to discuss Your life is in danger. Are you deliberately doing this? It took me time to decide on what I've done this night. Please, don't make me regret it. Come to me. Come with me. <laughs> It all ends tonight. Ego di no gu. Ego di no gu. Ego di no gu. So what exactly are you saying? That I'm not your type? That I'm not woman enough? Far from meet my princess. In fact, you're the most beautiful woman in Okunago Kingdom. It takes a lot of courage and strength to resist you. Then what exactly is the problem? Why are you rejecting me? I am not rejecting you. I am simply resisting what you want me to do. Doing this would not be right. Even if you want to do it, not this way. I am your father's right hand man. What will he think of me when he finds out I defiled his daughter at his back? You talk as if I'm still a child. My princess, far from it. I'm just echoing what would be your father's thoughts if we should engage in this immoral act. You are the princess of Unago Kingdom and no man should take you for free. My princess, I believe that anything that is what doing is what doing well. Besides, I swore to an oath of the caduces of ancestors never to betray the king. And sleeping with you is same as betraying the king and is capable of taking my life. Who is this person in trouble? The wicked will fall into the pit they dug for others. They shall eat their own poisoned food and drink their own poisoned wine. Tears shall replace their laughter. They shall cover their heads in shame for the rest of their lives as all their plans and endeavors will be frustrated. Chuhokike will judge them without mercy. The gods will protect and defend the innocent.
Ego Dunugo, I am the one who is attracted to you. I want you. You shouldn't be afraid of anything. My princess, never you undermine the caduceus of the ancestors. anything? Sense what? I felt a chill. You need to retire. You need to retire now. Igudunugu. I am not in the mood for any argument. Let me take you to your chamber. Now. And one more thing. Once the power returns and the pot is as heavy as it is, before it departed, it means that the young man did not die. Do not attempt again until you set your eyes on that man face. As it has pleased the gods to place you under my care. May the gods forbid that I will allow the innocent suffer for what they do not know about. I am certain you came to confirm me if I'm dead. What exactly do you mean? You know exactly what I'm talking about. As you can see, I am not dead. I'm still alive. But let me warn you. Let me give you an advice. Next time you try such again, you see what will happen. How dare you? I. How dare you talk to tell of us? How dare you? You want to kill him? Alama, this boy your father employed is an animal. Uncle, I'm disappointed you came this early just to fight. Is that all you have to say? You see someone who was on the verge of killing your uncle, and this is what you are saying. I have lived with Ego Dunogu for a long time now, and I can tell that he is not quick to anger. You have to leave now before others will come and see this. I'm sure they must have heard your voice. Leave! May the gods be praised. It's indeed a good day. After every thunderstorm comes the rain. The innocent will always be vindicated. I need you to call one of the guards. I need him to run an errand for me. Yes, my princess. Has breakfast been served? Not yet, my princess. In that case, I would love to take charge of that. I am in the mood for exceptional cooking. Your cooking has always been exceptional, my princess. <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you. Can we go to the kitchen now? <clears throat> Obi, it's not that I'm not happy that you came to see me. But the truth, however, is that I am surprised. And I believe you should know why it is so. I know. So, how are you? I'm fine. And you? 
I'm okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Um, your grandma, she's not home. Oh no. She has gone to the women's meeting. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. To what do I owe this visit? See, Obekunye, I'm here to apologize on behalf of my friend. I know she's not been very nice to you, and I am sorry about that. I know how it feels to love and not be loved in return. That's why I'm here to give you a listening ear and a shoulder to cry. Hmm, wow. <laughs> That's very thoughtful of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But seriously, it's nothing. If she had said yes the first day I met her, or rather the first day I approached her, I would have been disappointed. But you know she's seen someone else, right? I know. <laughs> I know. And I know who this someone else is. So why do I get the feeling there is much more to what she just said? Uh, not at all, no. Obi, I'm just a man in love. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Obi, Kuni. Why Ijima? Why are you so bent on having her? I love her so much. I love her so much that I cannot love another woman the way I love her. She's my life. I know it's not going to be easy. But I'll be patient. Okay. But I wish you did come for me instead. <laughs> <laughs> of the Gary. Seriously, you amaze me. Uh, it's okay. I'm um, I'm happy you came. Thank you very much. Um I was about going to check my traps before you came. We have to reschedule for another time. Okay. If you say so. I'll come back some other time to check up on you. Oh, it's okay. All right. Thank you. Why isn't he here yet? Did he not get my message? Why is he wasting so much time? Oh, God of my land. Has he changed his mind? Maybe he doesn't want to see me again. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Um. Oh, you're here. Yes. 
truth be told, I was beginning to think you were not going to honor my invitation. An invitation I long for even more than food. <laughs> I mean, why would you say that? I stand to be corrected. Well, my princess, thank you once again for yet another opportunity. I mean, for meeting with you again. <laughs> You're welcome. Please, call me Ifediche. Oh, okay then. Ifediche. Yes. You look extremely gorgeous today. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And I am not just saying this to flatter you. Hey. I mean every word of it. What can I say? Thank you. Once again, you're welcome. <laughs> I brought something for you. Um, yeah. Here we go. And this is the reason I kept you waiting. I was preparing this for you, especially. Oh, for me? I can't believe this. Is it in your nature to be this caring? Well, let's just say, I always try to be the best I can be. I'll take a bite. All right. Mm. You like it? I love it. <laughs> It's my favorite, Nchi. <laughs> Do you always cook this well? I try. Mm, this is really nice. I like it. I'm mm. happy you like it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, gods of our land, you have to save me from this one. Being a good cook myself, I have a theme for a young man who knows how to cook. You keep forgetting that I am no ordinary king. Now listen to me. Get out of my palace before I do something that you will regret for the rest of your life. Idiot. I hereby bar you from stopping your feet into this palace ever again. Get out! Get out! Ow! 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 